Hey guys, since we're not meeting today, I wanted to take a minute and go over with you pages 80 to 93 to kind of touch base to make sure you got everything. So it starts off with this radio newscast and they're letting us know what happened. So we have lots of different eyewitness reports here. And we have that the bus is pulling out of the parking lot, that it moves over to the middle lane, that there's this yellow van that keeps that shows up and is getting really close to the bus. And when the van gets close to the bus, they both blow up. I want you to remember that Omar stole a yellow van from the garage. Recall that, right? And Sama saw Omar in that yellow van just before it blew up. So these are important things to remember. Um, this, a few minutes later in another uh, radio newscast, we have another eyewitness that say that whenever the explosion happened, some people got out of their cars and ran to the bus to help and other people ran the opposite direction because they didn't know if another, something else was going to happen, right? Also, the explosion was so loud that everybody can't hear. It's almost like they're deaf. Uh, another radio newscast at 12.04 lets us know that the explosion ignited the fuel tank. So this was a big explosion because imagine how much gas a bus would be holding, right? Also, we find out that the explosives, um, the bomb that blew up, had nails, bolts, and shrapnel all stacked in there around the bomb. So when it blew up, it did extra damage to the people. And it flashes us over here on page 81 to Thomas Wanninger. He has just survived this explosion and he's laying there and he doesn't know what's going on. He's It's like complete chaos around him. He's like, am I, why am I on the ground? What is the smell? I keep smelling something. I'm deaf. I can't hear anything. And he sees somebody trying to talk to him, but he can't respond and he has no idea what they're saying. He really just wants to see his body because he can't feel it. He can't see, he doesn't know what's happening. He's like, if I could just see my body, everything will make sense. And then this man comes over to him, is leaning over him and is talking to him and pressing on his chest and putting something on him. And he just kind of passes out. He says, he's doing different things to me. I want, I want, and then he passes out. So then we get reports from the paramedics. So at 12.09, the paramedic is describing Thomas. He starts off victim, male, 15 or 16, talking until a minute ago, now unresponsive. And at 12.12, they give another report to the hospital regarding him, like, they have no idea who he is, there's no papers or anything on him, he's got lots of visible injuries, burns to his face, penetrating wounds on his hands and arms, and he has a pink froth coming from his mouth. They suspect that there's massive internal bleeding, um, and he appears to be in a very deep coma. So they've checked the victim, no ID, this guy's in a coma. This is Thomas. Um, Dr. Ricalda, Ricardo Hellman, he is briefing for everybody and he is explaining to them that although it looks like chaos in the hospital whenever the news crews come in and do their thing, he's like, this is organized chaos. There have been so many bombings. We know exactly what we're doing. We have a well-oiled machine here. We're going to take care of as many people as possible as they're brought in. We understand what to do with these types of injuries now because we've seen them so much, which is kind of sad. Um, then we flash to Vera. She has also survived. However, she's under a whole bunch of stuff on the bus. She's got someone's leg on her. She's got a metal bar on her face. She doesn't know what's happening. She also can't hear. She can't shout. She's trying. There's these nasty smells around her. She's trying to scream for help. Um, someone finds her. They find her underneath this rubble. They pull her out. She must have passed out because now she's being admitted to the emergency room. And they know that she is a female, 19 years old, no identity, anonymous. Her hair is burned. She has facial lacerations, glass fragments, cuts on her neck, her hands, wrist, elbow are open. The corner of her left eye is bleeding with shrapnel, possible nerve and tendon damage. Um, they do not believe she has any internal bleeding, so that's good. Her condition is considered moderate to severe at this time. She's been seen by millions of doctors. Then at 104, they give a little report on Thomas. They don't know it's Thomas. Um, they say he's in a coma and he responds to painful stimuli. His condition is critical at this time. So we've got Vera, moderate to severe. Thomas, critical. I think both of them are probably in a coma. Neither one of them has been identified yet. Nobody knows who they are, but they are in this hospital. At 1.45, we have an interview with the bus driver. The bus driver of the bus that blew up, Vera and Thomas were on. He got out with just a few scratches, which is amazing, right? Um, he's been bus driving 15 years. This is the second bombing he's been in. So I guess being a bus driver there is a really, really dangerous job. 
um, kind of thinks he knows what happened. So what he says happened, he's like, yeah, this new foreign kid got on, but he showed me his bag. He was totally fine. I picked him up at the airport. But there was this gingy, meaning a red-haired guy. Um, there was this red-haired guy, and he hopped on. He had on a shirt that had Hebrew lettering on it, so I kind of let him on at first. But the guy moved so fast. Kind of guard his memory for a second there, and he was like, you know what? There's something wrong. So he yells something out um, in another language. I'm not sure what it is, but it, whatever this word means, makabal, um, makes one of the soldiers get behind him and hits him in the head, right? Hits um, Sama in the head. So they know something's wrong with Sama, but as Sama's falling, that's when the explosion happened. The bus driver believes that Sama must have pulled the thing at that point. But Sama, let's see, as we go over to this next section, we find out that Sama is actually alive. He's in severe to critical condition, but he is alive. So did he did he blow it up? What happened there? We have to think about that. Um, so 54 passengers and the bus driver were on the bus at the time of the explosion. Then right here on page 87, we have the emergency room, and they are describing Sama. So there's no identity papers. They don't know who he is, but they suspect he's an illegal worker um, from the Palestinian territories, and he is under police guard, and his condition is severe to critical at this time. Um, next, we have a radio newscast, and we have this biology major who's now working like with ambulances. She's like, this bus was a twisted skeleton. Oh, guys, note that. That was a metaphor, right? The bus was a twisted skeleton, no windows, most of the roof gone. I always think what a miracle it is that people survive. And the thing that stays with her, interestingly, is the smell, right? What is the smell that they're all remembering and not ever forgetting? Guys, it's the smell of burning flesh. That's what they're hearing, smelling, and remembering. That's so, so terrible. Lydia shows up with Baruch at the hospital. They know that Vera must have been in this explosion because... Vera didn't call Seek and um, Thomas didn't call Seek. So they must have gotten together, got on the bus, and no one is called. So they, they know that they were in this explosion. They do not know if they're alive or not. So um, Lydia gives goes through how she and Vera first met and how they're very close, very different, almost opposites, but they have a lot of things in common, too, as far as their lives go. Um, they're very, very close. So... She is extremely worried about her friend. Uh, the nurse comes and explains all the chaos that's happening. And is like, listen, look at these pictures and tell me if this is her. And she looks at the pictures she's like, nope, that's not Vera, no way. But then the nurse is like, listen, girlfriends know things that other people don't. Please look at this. Please look at this picture for the smallest thing. And she looks at the picture again, and she identifies the um, nail polish light blue nail polish with a little star so it is Vera and of course Lydia has a breakdown and Baruch is like okay he keeps calm because he's amazing and he's like yes and she had somebody with her it was this German boy here I have a picture of him as well he's from Berlin and that is where it stops so for the remainder of today you are going to do your reading for tonight and you're going to complete your annotation chart you are also going to complete your literary device chart for the next section. And then you have an ACE response that you are going to work on. There are video directions attached to the ACE response and um, just a Google Slides presentation if you don't want to watch me go through it. Hopefully this helps you, and we will see you on Monday.